it's Lindsay, and it's Wednesday, so that means it's time for another What's Up Wednesday tip. And today's tip is for my Promethean users out there. I want to get you wild about Active Inspire activities. Okay, if you're not familiar with Active Inspire, it is Promethean's lesson building software. And it is a software, so it does have to be downloaded on a computer. It's a computer-based program. But y'all, the things you can do in here are phenomenal. I don't have time to get into everything. There's so many tools and magical things that you can do. I'm going to focus specifically on activities. Okay. And this was something that was added um, a little bit later after Active Inspire first came out. And if you have a panel, you can plug in your computer, pull this up in Active Inspire and do the activities there. And you can like touch on the panel and do them. Or if you have a, a titanium version nine or version nine premium, there is an activities app on there that you can pull these activities up on the panel as well. So we're going to get started. And to get to activities, when you open Active Inspire, it's going to open to your dashboard, which looks like this. Now, flip charts are what the Active Inspire files are called when you build out content in here. But I'm going to focus specifically on activities. And so I'm going to go back home to get to my dashboard and we're going to go to activities. Y'all, these take like less than five minutes to build out. Like it's super duper easy to put the content in and then immediately start playing these games, which I just love, I love, love, love. Okay, so there's 10 activities that you can do and you can see there's like categorization, flashcards, Venn diagrams, so many things you can do. I don't have time to cover all of them, but I'm telling you they are easy enough that you just open the activity and it's gonna like walk you through exactly what you have to do to set it up. So we're gonna start off with flashcards. So I'm gonna click on flashcards and it's gonna open for me. And this is it, y'all. I mean, it's super simple. From here, I can choose if I want an image or text on the front and an image on text or text on the back. So I'm going to do on the front, um, I'm going to do, we're going to go water cycle. Process of liquid changing to gas. We're going to keep it super simple. And then process of gas changing to liquid. Again, I would do much better with this, but for time's sake, I'm just going to do quick and easy. So you can do this if you have pictures. If you click here, it would take you to your pictures folder or your documents where you could find those. I'm just going to say cancel. Down here, like you really only can change the color scheme. It's not anything like super fantastic, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to leave it as is, and I'm just going to say play just to show you flashcards. So click play, and this is what it does. It's going to say, oh, let's play. So I'm going to click it. And then it's a flashcard, y'all. Process of liquid change into gas. I would do my little guess. Um, that would be evaporation. Flip. Yeah, I got it right. And then you could either flip again and practice some more or do next. Okay, so super simple. Took me, what, 20 seconds to type that out? Maybe a little bit longer because I kept messing up, but you get the idea. Easy, easy, easy. I'm going to go back to edit, though, because I don't want to keep this. If I did, I can click save and it would save it. Now, the one thing I would tell you when you are saving is look at your your um, path to where it saves because it's not going to save it to your documents. I always change it. And if I go to my documents, you'll notice I do have an activities folder. That's where I save the activities that I build out to use. OK, so what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to click the three dots and just change activity type to show you some of the other ones. And so if I do matching, I've already got the content here, so it's going to do it. So really and truly, if you want to do flashcards and have those built out, save your flashcards and then change your activity type to a different one, all of your stuff is going to be there already. So already that's a huge time saver. OK, three dots. I did change activity type. I'm in matching, so I'm going to do play. Let's play. And this is matching. It is a drag and drop where you they come up to the panel um, and drag and drop these into the right location. If you get it right, it sticks. If you get it wrong, it bounces right back out until it is correct. And if you'll notice, down here on the bottom, it does keep a record. I've got one wrong, but I've got one out of two right. And then when I'm done, it's, you did it, let's play again. Okay, I'm gonna go back to edit. That is matching. I'm gonna do, let's see, change activity type. You can do memory as well, and with memory, it's either going to be identical cards. So what it's going to do is do two cards or the process of liquid. But for this purpose, I want to do related cards. There we go. So I've got my related cards. I'm going to say play. Let's play. And then you flip. Okay, condensation. 
oh, I got it right on the first time. It doesn't always happen like that. I've only got two, so it was bound to happen. And then you just flip and get the cards. And when they match, they match. I'm going to go back to edit. And this time, I'm not going to use this. I want to show you. We got to change activity type real quick. You've got all these other ones. You've got crosswords. You've got word searches. And that will use the clue and either do the word um, in your word search or the word is the clue for your crossword. You've got Venn diagrams. You've got categorization. For this one, it's not going to work for this content. But think of like, I'm going to go super simple, even in odd numbers. You do an even category and an odd category, and then you do numbers. And the students have to drag them into the correct categories. So I'm like, I'm not even kidding. It's so easy to set these up. But I do want to show label diagram. So this is not going to transfer it to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this. I'm not going to save. And I'm going to go back into activities. And I'm going to do label diagram. I love this one. It's one of my faves. Because with label diagram, you can pull in a picture of whatever you have. It can be um, a map, which is what I'm going to do. Or like, th like the water cycle, where you have to label out the parts of the water cycle. I'm just going to do a blank United States map because I know I have that in my pictures. So I'm going to say open. And so here's my map. And let's say I just, we're, we're talking about the southeastern states and I want them to label them. So what you do is you put in your first box. So I'm in Louisiana. So I'm going to label that and notice it dropped a number one here. You're going to take this and move it to where the label would go. I'll do Louisiana. I'll do Texas. And let me let move Texas. And I will do Mississippi. Hey, okay. just for time's sake. All right. So I've got my labels there. I'm going to play. And this is how this one works. I'm going to say, let's play. All right. So notice I've got these little circles here. So you would take Texas and drag. And if it's right, it sticks. I'm going to do Louisiana to Mississippi here. And if it's not correct, then it just bounces and shakes. And again, notice at the bottom, it is keeping track of the number I get right and wrong. So that's all this is. The one caveat I will tell you to this is, I'm going to go back to edit. It's not like super precise as far as where this goes. So like if you wanted to do a coordinate plane, which I, I tried to do one time, when you line up the circles, it's really hard to tell where the line is going to be. So it's not great for like very specific location, but for something like this, where it's in the general vicinity, that circle will appear somewhere in this little blob that you have. So just know it's super easy to do. Again, when you're ready to play these activities, if you plug in your computer, you can open up Active Inspire, pull them up from here, pull them up from your folder where you have them saved, and then you can touch and do what you need to do on your panel. If you have a version 7 or a version 9 and you go into your locker or your applications, there is, mine is right here, but there is an activities folder there. So what I do is I save mine to Google Drive, go to my activities and my drive is connected on my panel through Cloud Connect and I'll pull up my activities that way. So lots of ways that you can use it, but it's a quick and easy way. And I, I mean, you see quick and easy to create activities with the content that you already have, just to add a little bit of interactivity, get the students up and out of their desk doing things on the panel to add that engagement piece. So this is Activities in Active Inspire. It's one of my favorite things ever. And um, again, quick and easy. I cannot stress that enough. So hope this helped. I'll see you again soon. Have a great day.